Hello learners, I'm Pradeep Naik, CEO of Fuel India. Welcome you all to another session of an exciting and a wonderful industry that is event industry. Today we're going to talk about staging of events. But before I talk about staging of events, I'd like to show you a small video which encapsulates the entire elements that I'm going to discuss about staging of events in just four minutes. This will be a heads up before we get into the topic giving you a clear insight about what is staging of events and how different things come together to form one big event. Allow me to show you this video.
Well, this one video actually shows, uh, or rather I would say covers all the elements that we're going to discuss under staging of uh, events. So in this video, what did you see? You saw that it's an empty hall. I would rather say it was not a hall. It was a factory, an abandoned factory, an empty abandoned factory converted into such beautiful mesmerizing event venue. Did you see how like hundreds of people came together? And I'm sure this uh, video, what we've seen is by uh, Benjamin Townsend uh, Photography. Um, it's a US based firm and uh, they did this time lapse video. This In this video, we could see each and every element as a part of staging of the events that we're going to discuss. Everything put together in just a small, short four and a half minute video. I'd like to thank uh, YouTube and Benjamin Townsend for creating such great video and uh, giving an opportunity for me to show this video to you. So before we go into details, I would like to start with the presentation. As I mentioned, staging events, that's the topic for the day. Now, what do we know? What is staging of events? Well, it's a theatrical concept actually originating from the presentation of plays in theaters. But in event, when we say staging of events, it is about different things coming together under one roof to provide clients or audience or the public an experience that they never had, uh, they never seen before or giving them a performance that they could remember or they could cherish, an experience that we can cater to them. So event staging is different elements, could be theming and design, could be catering, could be sound and light, or could be props and decor, or could be performers and crews and uh, lights and everything coming together under one um, roof and then delivering it to enhance the experience of the uh, customer or the audience. So under elements of staging, in, uh, in the video you would have seen um, that um, there are different elements. We started from a bare venue and then the trussing team comes in, then there is a decor team that comes in. So there are different teams who are working together uh, and that's when an event can come into life or how we bring dreams uh, into reality is when different teams could be from sound, could be from lighting, could be from staging, fabrication, decor. We also saw the catering team, the food, the food arrangements, everybody coming together to deliver something spectacular, which the uh, audience would have witnessed in that event. And similarly in the events that we do. So today, um, under elements of staging of events, there are seven different, eight different uh, elements. So let us quickly just run through the main elements and then we will go into detail of this. The first is uh, first one is theming and event design, which is a part of staging events, venue and site selection, audience and guest seating, stage, the main performance area, power, light, and sound. I would also add a, a bit of AV and uh, special effects in this, and catering, performance and crew, hospitality, recording the event. Now, before I go ahead and start with discussing each element of this, See, these elements which are mentioned here, they are broad categories. There'll be a little more subcategories, you know, it could be like prop and decor, or could be a little more in terms of, you know, entertainment and things like that, which will come under a subcategory. But these are the broad categories under staging of events that we'll be looking for. So I will start this, uh, I'll go ahead, uh, or I will start this session with theming and event design. That's our first uh, element that we want to discuss. What is theming and event design? So whatever kind of event that you select, whether it is going to be a wedding, whether it's going to be a conference, whether it's going to be an exhibition, whether it's going to be a birthday party, whether it is going to be a, a sports uh, event or any kind of event, the first and foremost thing that you're going to decide uh, is the theming and the styling. It can also be called a styling. The reason being, uh, sometimes we also choose a theme, sometimes we also choose the style, the way, uh, the look and feel of uh, the venue or the event is going to be. So the first and foremost thing that we have to decide or we actually ask the client is what is that is there in their mind. Sometimes what happens is that a client say, no, I don't know. You suggest what is the most happening? What is the trend at 2020? What is the trend in 2021 or 22? So what is the futuristic trend? There are themes which actually talks about how 2050 might look like that have been movies made. There could be sci-fi theme, that could be casino theme, that could be a wine theme. The themes, there is endless themes as long as the event managers can be creative. So once you decide on the theme, another important aspect which goes hand in hand, you know, along with theme is the number of people, which definitely I'll address it at a later stage. But just to give you a heads up on that, saying that um, not everything uh, like 
theme cannot be the sold uh, decision uh, making thing um, number of audience also because if i like a theme i'll have to see you know whether it is going to be executable at large for example i can't choose a particular theme when i'm catering to an audience of like 80000 1 lakh people right so theme can be um, kind of um, made custom to a lesser number of people one lakh people might there could be some executional challenges uh, the look and feel of the event can happen but if i have to uh, get everybody uh, engaged in the experience it might be a challenge however it is possible to a larger extent for example for 2000 3000 4000 people it is possible and it also depends upon the duration of the event so the first and foremost thing is deciding the styling the style of the event or the theming of the event or the event design so how the look and feel of the event is going to be and how it has to be designed there could be something uh, which is there um, when you search for google you'll find hundreds of themes that is available but uh, the true designers or the conceptualizer of a event company or uh, the you know event managers they are the people who come uh, there are people who come up with some out of the box idea some original concept driven ideas or could be some themes or something which would actually relate to the uh, client so uh, mostly it happens in weddings uh, it actually depicts the personality of uh, the bride or the groom or the family that they belong to or uh, if they uh, they are a family which has a uh, 100 to 150 years of traditions to showcase then they look at some historical uh, theme so it all depends um, it, it, in birthday parties it could be that um, your uh, like their son or their daughter uh, might be a fan of uh, beam or it could be a fan of uh, avengers or it could be a fan of fairy tales or tales spin anything the theme will be decided as per their interest and it will be custom designed for them so this is more about theme and event design so i'll just show you a small uh, slide with some photographs which will give you a clear picture about what we're talking about the first image that you see is a py festival uh, of uh, the 2017 that happened if you see the theme i know the the, uh, the it is kind of uh, inspired from uh, the botanical gardens of Singapore and uh, it is executed there. So uh, probably the organizers would have seen something of uh, that scale, magnanimous scale there and they wanted to bring this. Uh, and also it works like an ambience and the decor element. Uh, yes, so that was the uh, style and theme that they followed for that year, 2017. The second image just below that you will see is a casino theme. It's a reception uh, uh, party and um, the theme is casino because probably the bride and the groom uh, wanted uh, probably they did this in Las Vegas. Uh, they wanted to show that casino as a theme. Uh, so this is how the decor and everything will automatically make you think on those lines and the entire decor depicts that it's a casino theme. The third one is also a reception. It's a winterland theme. So if you see the uh, uh, trees and the twigs that have been used, the candles, the flooring color, white, the flowers that have been used, the chairs, everything is white. It's like a snow-filled uh, um, you know, uh, reception area. Um, Again, um, as the name goes, the Winterland theme is what has been. Recognized. So um, there is no limitations on how much uh, event manager can think to what limit, as long as your operation or the production team have the capability or have the bandwidth to execute it. So there is no end to it. Now let's go to the second element of staging of events: venue and site selection. Yes, we meet the client, we take the brief, or we uh, conceptualize some event. Um, we come up with a theme, oh, this is how it's going to be. It's going to be a, um, a carnival theme. It's going to be a circus theme and everything. But as I told you, few things that we have to consider while making a decision is also the number of people. So if I'm doing a public event, I'm expecting thousands of people to attend. So venue, or it could be even hundreds also. So venue and site selection also plays a very, very important role because your venue should allow you to do such, uh, you know, out of the box, uh, should be able to accommodate your out of the box ideas. It can't be that you have a great uh, theme, but the venue is not allowing you to do that. Could be due to permission, or could be due to structural issues, or could be limited structure that you have, could be um, a problem with the ceiling. So the finalization of venue will also define the theme, or if the theme is already decided, then you look for a venue that will suit your theme. But in case you don't get, then you will have to custom build it. Well, there are people. Well, there are people who custom build the entire city, who custom build the entire. I'm, I've seen weddings where they've created the entire Greece, they've created Spain, you know, they've actually created artificial river, they've created boat. So there is no end to it. As long as you have that money power to pump in the amount of money, then there is no problem in terms of the event managers or the conceptualizers running their brains and creating such great setups and great themes. 
So venue and site selection. So what happens is that there are ready-made venues. You know, it could be, I mean, venues can be anything. It could be sports stadiums. It could be theaters. It could be golf course. It could be schools. It could be associations, swimming pools, of course, museums, malls, and historical venues like uh, the parliament house or just outside. I'm not saying inside the parliament house, outside the parliament house, palaces, or temples. And there are many such places, including there has been a trend now where people are also looking at, you know, ruins. Uh, there could be old factories which is closed down. There could be uh, buildings which is uh, completely demolished, but uh, uh, the few you know uh, site remains are there. So people like such rustic venues, you know, for launch and everything. They use such venues. And again, as I told, it also uh, is uh, left to the imagination or the level of design thinking uh, the uh, you know conceptualizer or the designer or the event manager does that they can execute in such venues. So in terms of venue and site selection, I would say that either take a venue which is already ready and think your theme around it or if you have a theme and there's no venue that fits then if you have good budget then make sure you find an empty ground and construct completely there there has been instances i would not suggest one or just handful of there has been many such instances that where they have created everything from scratch in they just taken a playing ground and there are chances that sometimes you don't even get a leveled places uh, just to cite an example, um, sunburn in the year 2018, I guess, 2018 or 17, happened. Uh, sunburn usually happens uh, in uh, Goa, and uh, they had to shift the venue to Pune, and they did it on top of a hill, which was hardly used by anybody. They actually kind of uh, widened the road, created a pathway for people to go up to the hill, and the hill was leveled to an extent on top because it has to accommodate around 35 to 40,000 people, and then an amazing setup was put there. But yes, it took months and months of hard work, labor, planning, designing, etc. But yes, things can be customized based on the money power you are ready to invest and the kind of permissions that you can get. Here are the small um, examples. So the first image that you see is an empty hall. The image just below that you see how that same empty hall is converted to a beautiful venue for reception. On the right hand side, you see uh, on the below, uh, at the bottom of the image, uh, you see there is a hall which is empty, and on top you see the same hall which is converted into a reception venue with beautiful uh, tables. Uh, there are the center decor in the table. Uh, the pillars have been draped. Uh, a lot of lightings that have been used, and how a uh, plain yellow, a uh, plain vanilla venue has been converted to such beautiful uh, decor uh, lit event. So this is what event managers can do this is what the level of uh, you know um, concept that they can uh, adapt and they can execute provided you have that imagination to uh, create something of that level or provided you have uh, an operation team and production team to back it up with uh, such level of imagination with this we go to the third element uh, before i go to i'm really sorry before i go to the third element i would also like to show you these two pictures so um, in terms of venue and site selection here on the left hand side, the first image that you see um, is a small reception uh, or a wedding uh, thing set up that has happened at a golf course. I mean, we're thinking who will do a wedding or reception at a golf course? But look at that view, look at that sunset and uh, you know the, uh, the uh, reflection on the pond there. So this is such a beautiful venue. As long as you have permissions in place, look at the setup. It looks beautiful. It's very simple and uh, minimalistic, but still very classy. Uh, on the right hand side, you see um, a setup that is done on lake. So it is a floating, um, um, no, a flooring that they create and on top of it they build a stage. So it's a floating stage actually, a floating stage and even it is happening on a floating stage. So um, as I told you, uh, again, I'm sure uh, you might be thinking why am I repeating it so times as I told, it is your imagination or the uh, limit of imagination that you can do. Um, as long as there are permissions in place and uh, the imaginations that you can build you can do anything and yes, your production team should be able to support it. There have been instances where people have done, uh, you know, uh, there have been uh, stages that is hanging from the helicopter. Uh, there has been uh, you no know, events that has been done on cruise. There has been mundups that have been done on cruise. Uh, floating stages of this uh, stature has been done many, many times. You know, a lot of lakes uh, in um, Rajasthan and everything, they have been used uh, like that. And uh, many such beautiful musical events have been done. So as long as you have permissions and as long as you have the capacity to execute it, there is no limit. So any venue or any site can be converted to an event location provided there is enough uh, support or uh, capacity to or bandwidth to execute such events. 
Now let us talk about audience and guest seating. So once uh, we decide, so we decide uh, is the theme and event designing, and then we decide the venue, and we also decide the number of people. So now there are ready venues, you know, banquet halls are ready venues, auditoriums are ready venues, or um, you know hotels uh, uh, banquet facilities in hotels or it could be uh, you know convention centers or it could be uh, you know, community halls so now audience seating will define the kind of event that you're going to do and the number of people that you want to invite so before i get into details of what kind of event what kind of seating broadly the seating system is divided into three categories classroom theater and banquet or called as cluster also so different hotels or different industries use different terminologies. Banquet is also known as cluster seating. So now mostly conferences, you know, conferences or summits or conventions or those kind of events, they would prefer a theater seating. Now just to differentiate or, or rather I would say not differentiate, but I would say uh, to identify who are the VIPs, the first row is converted into cluster and the rest of the rows might be theater. Or it could be entire cluster or it could be entire theater. But mostly conferences, what happens is that if there is a banquet hall, which is around 6,000 square feet, which can take up to around 400 seating in theater, what they do is that if I do it completely cluster because of the table, which is around six feet to eight feet dia, it will take a lot of space. So instead of 400 seating, you'll be able to accommodate only 150 to 160 guests. So that'll lead up. So it depends. If you have only 150 to 60 guests, uh, 150 to 160 guests and it's a 6,000 square feet hall, then go ahead do cluster seating. It will have a little more appealing uh, look. But at the same time, you're saying, no, that's the amount of space that I have, but I have 300 plus guests, then yes, go ahead, uh, make it completely theater. So theater, as you see, as it knows, the name goes also, it is how the theater seating is done, one after the other, kept. So as for the um, eye level of the person who's going to sit and so that the visibility level is not blocked. What is classroom setup? Classroom setup, if you see the image here, um, it is as good as like we have uh, chairs and then there is a table right opposite each uh, set of chairs. So classroom setup is usually uh, kind of done for workshops or if there is any training sessions that happen where uh, there is a need uh, of you know person doing some kind of a laptop work or in writing, drawing, painting, any kind of work that is done and that person needs a support, could be a table. So mostly done for workshops, training purposes or seminars. Uh, and um, mostly done in hotels. Rest what we see is the boardroom or the U-shape. This is mostly done for a uh, discussion or a board meeting as the name goes. And these are normally uh, readily available at different five-star properties or different star or hotels. It's readily available. So these are the main uh, types of seating. So what you have to do is one is once you finalize the location, you have to look at the number of guests. Based on the number of guests, then you have to decide whether the theater seating is going to suit or a cluster seating. Now, also it depends upon the type of event. If it's a high profile event, you will have to do entire thing as cluster. Or it could be weddings uh, in an open ground or an open lawn where normally they do uh, cluster seating so that you know people can bring their food, they can sit together, they can have. And also these uh, cluster seatings give you an option or give an opportunity to create a center table arrangement also, which adds an element of prop in the wedding decor and design. Um, so there are different aspects so before you uh, finalize but mostly the most important factor aspect is that the number of people that can be accommodated than the type of event so once the type of event is de uh, defined whether it's going to be conference or thing then they can do decide theater or cluster once that is decided what they can do is that in case they see that out of 350 400 people there are 30 people who are vips or vvips or it could be you know ministry or somebody who's coming then they can do a little bit of barricading and use the first row remove the entire theater of the first row or the second row and convert them into cluster so that's how they can help in terms of you know barricading or differentiating amongst the seating so that vip seating is done separately and the rest is done separately so these are the images i'm sure you can go look up on uh, google or youtube where you can get different images and uh, different formats yes they're known in different names as i told banquet is also known as cluster seating theater classroom these are the names that we commonly use in our industry the first image that you see is a, a boardroom seating the image below that what you see is a classroom setup if you see it's a typical classroom setup and mostly used for training and workshops on top then this uh, first image that you see on the right hand side is a theater setup where the chairs are placed right behind each other with a good uh, two and a half, three feet gap so that each person can pass through it and two aisle space have been done so that there could be good movement of guests according to their rows. And the last image that you see, fourth one, is the cluster seating. 
So normally this uh, cluster seatings uh, can be done if there is a, uh, all the tables are facing the stage, uh, then there will be like it will be done in a U shape of each cluster that are around six feet to eight feet dia, that are the tables commonly available in the hotel industry. With this, I'll go to the next element that is a very important element, uh, the stage. So in the event management, the stage actually covers a broader aspect. For example, um, the design and decoration that we do across the venue, whether it's gonna be at the entrance and anything, it will all complement to what is there on the stage. And the stage will have a little more decor or a little more appealing than the rest of the thing so that it would attract uh, all the audience and their attention to the stage. So the stage shall always stand out than the entire decor. The reason being, um, it's, a, it's a human tendency that if something is more appealing or looking more appealing on the other side, we tend to look there. So if the stage is not as appealing as your decor around, then what will happen automatically, uh, people's attention will move to the stage when so many important things might be happening. Could be a wedding, could be a conference or anything that is happening. So mostly what they do is they keep the stage dynamic uh, just to capture the attention or they keep the content around the stage, things like that. So uh, stage becomes a uh, main uh, performing or the showcase area. Um, the entire um, appeal of a stage uh, is uh, amplified by using different truss, LED walls, or it could be using LED stages, or it could be used uh, not different kinds of lightings and trussing, or um, it would be the kind of the way the seat arrangements have been done on the stage for panel discussion. So different aspects or different elements of decor and prop that is used to amplify the look and feel of the stage, which is the central part of the entire event that is gonna happen there. Here are some of the images that you see. Uh, the first one is of a wedding reception. The second one is of a, a film fair award that is happening. Uh, the third one is the Oscar. And the fourth one is of a, a rock show concert that's happening at a, a badminton court. Now, here in these images, if you see, um, the entire stage is completely lit, whether it is with LED wall or the background in Oscar, they in fact used lacks of one of the edition, I think 2018 edition of Oscar, they used um, Swarovski to create the entire backdrop. Swarovski is like expensive and they create the entire backdrop. That means like thousands of pieces of Swarovski was used to create the backdrop because the only thing that was standing out was the stage there and the stars who were standing right in front of the stage. So that's why the stage forms a very important and the most um, you know, central part of the event um, to capture the attention of the people, uh, to encapsulate them in the entire context of the event that is happening around. With this guys, um, I come to end of this uh, session on staging of events. Um, I will go into details uh, in terms of uh, uh, going to other aspects uh, of staging of events, other elements of uh, staging of events, uh, it, about catering, uh, could be about uh, sound light and uh, performance and uh, crew, uh, recording the event and uh, all this, which uh, we'll take up once uh, I'll start the second session um, in my uh, next video. Um, in regards with the uh, topics that I've discussed uh, today, uh, that is first one is the theming and event design. The second one is, uh, venue and event uh, selection uh, that we do and the audience guests that we have done and uh, also the um, the last point that we uh, discuss is in uh, regards with the stage. So um, you can look up on uh, Google um, about the different types of uh, stages that you can you know, kind of uh, get inspired. Also, uh, in terms of venue and site selection, I would uh, like to uh, put some light on uh, things like events that happen at stadium or uh, it could be at some open ground or some concert. So um, look at for some time-lapse videos or uh, look at uh, for after and before kind of uh, photographs on uh, Google or YouTube. So you will get a clear insight as how a venue or a theme or a design and all these things come together in forming staging of events. So um, I shall discuss the rest of the uh, elements of staging of events in my next video. In case you have uh, any such doubts, uh, please uh, feel free to write to me. Um, thank you all for listening to me.